Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. We're joined now by former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick, who is here with us in studio. Governor, great to see you. Thank you so much Thank you for, for having me. coming in. It's hard to acknowledge the week that is being had here in Chicago without Has it been just a week? Well, I guess it's been two days, but, you know, these are these are stacked <laughs> and days, I was sir. Say, it, it, like and, <laughs> yeah, the last four weeks, I think, has probably felt like a year to, to many. But it is historic in nature. Mm. We are about to see not just a woman, but a woman of color mm-hmm. for the first time accept the Democratic nomination for president. Yes. And there is obviously very charged language on the other side mm-hmm. uh, of this campaign. How should we be thinking about uh, the politics of race in this election cycle, especially given the candidacy of Kamala Harris? Well, I think, first of all, the, the, there's probably more race in our politics than I'd like, and I think probably most people would, uh, uh, would like, but I love firsts uh, as one. And I think um, I feel incredibly blessed at a time like this to live in a country where you can, you can be a Kamala Harris and come from what she's come from and become the nominee uh, of the Democratic Party for President of the United States. And I think she will win, and I think she'll do a great job. I feel the same kind of elation about Tim Walz, who grew up on a farm, I think in Nebraska, mm-hmm. um, and has uh, lifted himself and been in service, like Kamala Harris, of lifting others, and has the opportunity now to, to be the Democratic nominee for vice president. Mm-hmm. That is an American story. And it is, um, in, the, in the instance of Kamala Harris, associated with race. But it is a story that uh, once was told more often in this country than any other country on earth. And I'm a Democrat for some of the reasons that, uh, frankly, they've been talking about, that we've got to create in the collaboration between government and the private sector circumstances that um, permit people not just to imagine a different place for themselves, but actually practically to reach for it. Hmm. People should know you were only the second black man elected governor in the United States of America. I had the pleasure of covering you for some time as the governor of Massachusetts. Thank you, Joe. I also remember what happened when Danielle Allen uh, tried to run for governor. She Mm -hmm. dropped out of the race because she said there was no path. Mm -hmm. What about the challenges specifically facing women of color, black women, trying to reach higher office? I, well, first of all, of, of uh, Danielle, who is an immensely talented. I hope she'll come back into politics. I don't know that the only factor in okay. her decision to, to drop out was being a woman of, uh, of color. Um, I think probably I stayed in because I didn't know any better. It was my first time running for anything. You remember, Joe. Sure. And, uh, and our dynamic at home in Massachusetts I would say is less Democrat Republican than it is insider outsider. By the way, I think that's the dynamic increasingly all over the country. How about that? And um, so I think, now having said that, I think there are special challenges and maybe opportunities hmm. for uh, the Harris Walls uh, candidacy because it's such a short period of time. And they will have to do some things that aren't always done in our uh, uh, kind of um, um, uh, unlimited, <laughs> you know, political campaigning. Yeah, right. um, and a lot more direct to, uh, uh, to voters, a lot more direct, uh, a lot more volunteer organizing that's outside the campaign, which I think has been one of the most inspiring parts of this, uh, of this experience. She's finding her voice. We did the first event um, six days, I think, after the torch was passed in Western Massachusetts, and she showed up. It was ab- absolutely electric. I see her now uh, at podium, and she seems a lot more relaxed. She's paying less attention to the teleprompter. And yeah, yeah. So there are those, uh, uh, those challenges. And converting all this energy and excitement to actual organization and turnout, right. that's not a small thing. Mm. But as I say, I think a lot of other folks are taking that on themselves outside the campaign. And I think they will have to rely on, uh, on some of us just doing it on our own. Hmm. You, of course, have had a storied career in politics, but you now also work in, in business mm-hmm. and you come on Bloomberg for, for that reason and, and others. How do you consider what a Kamala Harris presidency would look like and what kind of investment opportunities or the way in which it may change the business climate? Knowing specifically there's been a, a focus on democratic values for you, Vistera, specifically, how does that, how do you see her reflected in in the, the business world. Well, so to the to the first uh, to the notion of 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 democratic values, um, and I use that term um, 
in a nonpartisan way, the notion that, um, that communities, that people, that place all matter, they all count. Um, one of the things we do at the Vistria Group and that I did at the fund that I founded at, uh, at Bain Capital, so-called Impact Investing Fund, was invest in ways that demonstrated you didn't have to, retur- you didn't have to exchange superior financial return for stakeholder engagement and stakeholder, positive stakeholder uh, impact. And I think that is important to long-term value. It's also important to the long-term success of, uh, uh, of businesses. What I want to see uh, going forward is a lot more conspicuous collaboration with the business and the not-for-profit uh, community. I'm not just talking about how to regulate or the importance of regulating, as we used to say in Massachusetts, at the speed of business. So it's not a barrier, it's an enabler. Um, but I mean, just really trying to identify what the opportunities are, how, for example, you leverage these enormous new tools in the infrastructure bill, in the CHIPS and Science uh, Act, and in the, um, in the rescue plan, alongside private sector uh, um, assets mm-hmm. and investment to create lasting uh, economic growth. Because that is a part of that story of opportunity in this country too, right? We have to have an economy that grows. As the president says, and I have said, it has to grow out to the middle and the marginalized and not just up to the well-connected. Well, it's nice to see you here in Chicago. People might not realize your hometown, isn't it? It is. Here we are. It is. Nice to see you in Chicago. It's good to be here. Thank Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Here at the table. Deval Patrick, the former governor of Massachusetts at the DNC here in Chicago.